I'll keep this brief. I think most of you know what Thai is about, and uh, we'll brief our guests uh, uh, through our website and brochure uh, as we will really want to get to the topic of uh, State of Palestine, what's happening there, and how is entrepreneurship flourishing over there, which is of interest to all of you. So, um, uh, without any further delay, I'd like to uh, uh, ask our uh, co-founder, Vish Mishra, past president, m many of you know, uh, to be uh, our uh, host here for the evening to get the evenings uh, kicked off. Vish, thanks very much. That was Rana Desai, our uh, executive director of Thai Southern Valley, and uh, he's been with us since inception, so thanks, Raj. Um, I just see just some new faces, and uh, so, but I'll, I, I, well, I cannot uh, um, um, help but uh, put a plug in for Thai because uh, our story is actually very, very unique. Uh, but in a nutshell, the whole genesis and beginning of Thai goes back to very successful you know, folks from South Asian countries, primarily from India and some you know, Pakistan regions, who came in the 60s and 70s with nothing but good attitude, good education, uh, good work ethic, and they came to America and they made it. They really realized their American dream. And uh, you know, so back in um, you know late, um, late early 90s, actually 1992, um, they kind of got together. And most of us had come from different parts of India and other parts uh, parts of the world. And they all got here to Silicon Valley. Say, won't that be nice if we form a society and help anyone? Who wants to realize their American dream and who wants to, you know, see who wants to succeed as entrepreneurs or as business executives or even, you know, folks in academia? So that's how this tie started, and so they are highly successful but also highly generous people, and they just give their time and energy freely to this organization and helping. They expect nothing in return. And uh, this society is very unique. There are 300 such people in the valley. When you look at our, go to our website, look at the list of the people. Like, who, who, who is who the valley? Some of them are in this room tonight, and uh, we call them charter members. It's by invitation only. So you just can't just go apply to our we because we want to, you know, we can verify your successes. Uh, that's easy to verify, but you know, how do we verify your generosity? That's why we spend a lot of time trying to vet you. Are you really in a position? Are you really want to give back? Are you really want to, to help people? So that is the society that we have formed, and I just want to acknowledge some of those folks in the room because that's really awesome. So here, Dr. Praveen Gupta, very early, Dr. Nagesh Matre over here, Dr. Sanjay Kumar. So this table is loaded with doctors over here. And only one of them, one of, one of them is a formal medical doctor, but he's an engineering doctor and he's a biotech doctor. So, uh, but uh, we have then I see, um, um, let's see, I saw Paul, Dr. Paul Singh. Uh, with a white turban, uh, he's also a board member, sales entrepreneur, and uh, successful entrepreneur in the valley. Uh, we got Rana over there in the back, Rana Bose, long time Thai travel member. Then we got Raju Reddy sitting next, right next to him. I see you, um, another successful entrepreneur, and uh, doing good, very active with his um, alma mater, Pilani, British Pilani, opened a campus in Dubai. Yeah, for all the places, this is interesting. Uh, let's see, who else is here, the travel member? Uh, okay, so so that's the charter member. So what happened that they survey nucleus and they attract anybody who wants to succeed. So those are whether someone is a already entrepreneur or a would-be entrepreneur, wants to join an entrepreneur or want to support an entrepreneur, they're all welcome as members. And then the outer periphery we invite or they actually <laughs> select us, uh, what we call our sponsors. These are top name venture capitalists, top name corporations, top name law firms, accounting firms. So they come on board as our sponsors. So that is the that that that's the core of Thai, and every chapter just basically replicates that. And the program that we conduct on on a year-round basis is of two kinds. One is any program that will inspire an entrepreneur, will inform the entrepreneur, will educate the entrepreneur, will prepare the entrepreneur, or now even fund the entrepreneur. So that's on one side. On the other hand, we all talk about what is the future. Where are the trends in the industry? So currently, because it's Silicon Valley, so we have big focus on mobile, social, uh, big data, analytics, life sciences, energy, like that. So those are the kind of program and workshops we conduct. The other thing we also do, because the government discovered us when we first started, and and uh, and we, Mefik just had an earlier visit from the government of uh, uh, Azerbaijan, and we have feature about 50 different government agencies. They come from different parts of the world. They want to come discover Silicon Valley. And they have found us. 
that because we do these things in such a you know unselfish way, so they come to us and we're very open and candid because we're not a political organization, not a religious, not a cultural. We are all about business and entrepreneurship, and we you know we draw you know no boundaries or uh, or whatever. So people come to us and they get honest to goodness, candid advice and opinions as to how can they you know take innovation back to their homeland or their uh, region and stuff like that. So we're just so delighted that we are really, this is the first time ever for Thai, and thanks to our dear friend Kamran over here, that we are seeing a delegation from Palestine. And uh, I'm going to sample some of your wisdom here tonight, but tomorrow I'm also going to be seeing you guys again over uh, at the USVP office that Kamran has invited me for, and I know you have only been Commonwealth, and you are on the KQD radio. So this is really amazing. Uh, Cameron, you know, I, you know, I mean, if I had to take introduce him, it will take me, you know, two days to introduce Cameron. But I'll just kind of keep it very simple and short. Cameron is, for those of you who don't know, he is a Silicon Valley legend. I mean, this man has innovations, you know, you know, up his belt like anybody um, um, can imagine. Uh, so not only being a, just a terrific high-tech entrepreneur, he also is a wonderful you know philanthropist i mean he calls himself the global citizen and truly i've not met anybody who has traveled to that many countries you know far and wide than this man okay so he just goes all over spends his money and he's all about improving the human condition human life through entrepreneurship this is a very interesting thing through entrepreneurship and right from the you know children to elderly people and anybody in between you know he has that and uh, especially um, uh, you know we um, many many stories uh, around him, but uh, he is. Uh, if you, I think uh, probably Cameron. I don't know. You, you know, maybe the probably if you um, um, you probably invented maybe or discovered democracy in a way that no one really has done. Okay, this man was born and raised in Iran, and he became a revolutionary in his teenage years. Okay, and he had to escape Iran because you know he said, hey, church and state should not mix. And this is his philosophy ever since, okay? Everywhere he goes, he keeps the church and state so separate, and he will speak his mind, and uh, you know, no one can stop him. So, and Cameron, you know, just delighted to, to welcome you back here, and please uh, introduce the delegation, and let's have a wonderful evening, okay? Thank you very much. Behind each great man, there is a woman. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry, stand up. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, 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 that's true, that's right, man. <laughs> That's right. I mean, this pair is, is, just, is just a dynamic duo. There's no doubt about that. Okay, so, Cameron, okay, take it away. So, those of you who don't have a great woman behind you, please do make sure you find one, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Actually, the true story in our uh, household is that uh, I always say behind every powerful, successful woman, there is a bald, fat, short guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Vish. Thank you, Raj. Uh, all the friends uh, in uh, Thai, and uh, thank you, Paul, for uh, suggesting this and uh, arranging uh, a lot of the background work. I uh, highly appreciate it. Tonight, we are privileged uh, to have uh, an amazing delegation visiting us uh, from Palestine. Uh, many of us, when uh, we hear the word Palestine, all we can think about is uh, the bad news, the images that we see on the media, and the portrayal of people who are unhappy, that uh, they are terrorists, that they are always uh, uh, trying to attack and have uh, uh, violence and all of that. And uh, unfortunately, that was the image I had uh, till 1990. Eight, first time that I had the honor to go to Palestine and uh, I had some uh, investments in Israel and uh, I went there to uh, visit some of the uh, venture capitalists there and uh, I wanted to go and visit Palestine because we had our schools online program that we wanted to go and set up computer labs in every country and uh, Palestine we didn't have any uh, connections there so I uh, found somebody in Silicon Valley who was Palestinian and they arranged some meetings with us, uh, for us with Minister of Education there. And uh, I couldn't find any Israeli who would take me to Palestine. It's only about a 
distance wise is uh, from uh, East Jerusalem is maybe 20 minutes uh, by car, a very, very short distance. Uh, but uh, the amount of negative image and negative publicity was unbelievable. And I kept looking at all my friends and I finally pushed. I had this dear friend of mine, Eliezer Manor, who I said, Eliezer, why don't you come? and take me to Palestine. You have a car and you know the ways. And uh, he said, yes, but you know, I haven't been there since occupation. I went there as a soldier. I am afraid to go there as a peacemaker and whatever. And I said, well, just put your uh, good intentions on and uh, you mean well and we have mission of peace in place. Uh, come and don't be afraid. So both of us are driving and as we've got uh, to the, uh, we're leaving the Israeli uh, side of uh, Jerusalem towards the uh, checkpoint, uh, Kalandir, uh, this Israeli policewoman uh, stopped us and she said, where are you going? And we said, we are going to Palestine because you know we had the Israeli license. But, and even she was scaring us that they don't go there, they will throw rocks at you, roll up the windows. So you can imagine the view that we had was so misguided, so crazy. And uh, we got into uh, the big square in Ramallah and we got lost and we didn't know which way Ministry of Education was and uh, Google map was not around then <laughs> and we couldn't find our way so we stopped and uh, decided to look and you should picture this my Israeli friend his hands are all shaking because he's thinking my god last time he was here was on a 30 years ago or <laughs> whatever as a soldier 40 years ago or something and he was really scared what is going to happen and a big crowd approached us and he started to think, oh my God, we are all going to be, you know, killed or whatever. And they all had the biggest smile on their face and they came and said, how could we help you? You look lost. And he was just like, my God, how could they be so kind to me? How could they be so nice? And uh, they said, uh, you are visitors? We said, yeah, and we want to go to the Ministry of Education. And a couple of them volunteered to walk and uh, show us the way. And, he kept shaking his head, I can't believe these people are so nice. And lo and behold, the more we got to know them, the more we got <laughs> them, the better it was. And then, uh, you know, this uh, became, uh, you know, many of you who know me when I talk about um, why I love India so much and uh, why I have uh, uh, tried to uh, go to India and uh, do whatever I try to do little things that I always uh, say that uh, in my heart I'm Indian. Uh, I have to say that in my heart I'm Palestinian and uh, I really developed an amazing love for that country and uh, it uh, is contagious and uh, I uh, stop at this point. Uh, I guess Vish had asked me to mention one thing uh, as a relationship between India and uh, Palestine. I don't want to take much time so I will briefly mention that uh, uh, in one of my visits, um, after so many years, uh, I was visiting in, uh, with some of the youth who were uh, Hamas members, and uh, there were a young crowd, and uh, uh, we were trying to promote uh, a different style of, uh, uh, you know, ending the occupation, and uh, some of these youth were saying, no, we want to uh, believe the only way to end Israeli occupation is through violence, and I asked one of them, why do you say that? And he said, uh, because that's the only way. And I said, what about Gandhi's way? And this young man said, who is Gandhi? And he was a young, you know, 18, 19 year old. So that uh, kind of gave me an idea that maybe there are some youth in Palestine that may not know who Gandhi is. And uh, I came out, while many other people know, and that there is actually quite a bit of uh, nonviolent work that has been going on without my knowledge. Uh, I came to LA and I worked with uh, Jeff Skoll and uh, Jeff being in the you know, co-founder of eBay and him being uh, in Hollywood and being chairman of Participant Productions. He knew everybody in Hollywood so we met with Jake Evers, uh, the producer of Gandhi movie and then we met with uh, Lord Attenborough, the director and with Ben Kingsley and we arranged for them to come with us to uh, Palestine, uh, we actually hired a Palestinian director to dub the movie in uh, Arabic with Palestinian uh, actors, voice actors, and uh, we took Ben Kingsley and Jake Evers with us uh, to Ramallah on the 75th anniversary of the 
uh, salt marsh exactly to the day. And uh, the basic thing was to show, create a way to communicate with the youth that uh, there is a non-violent way to end the occupation that is 10 times more powerful. And uh, uh, this, uh, we showed it to over 100,000 uh, uh, people over the course of the next four years. And uh, it uh, ended up to be on a number of uh, uh, young people who wanted to have their own uh, activities going on. And my wife sort of uh, started uh, to go there and uh, became a board member of uh, one of the most wonderful uh, organizations, the non-profit organizations called uh, Partners for Sustainable Development. And uh, they um, actually started another project called Nedketabi, which I will not go into details, but is providing laptops and tablets to a uh, large population of the kids uh, in Palestine. And many are, a few of the people in here are board members and all of them are supporters of that project. So with that being said, uh, let me uh, turn uh, uh, the attention uh, to our wonderful guests. And uh, I will start uh, with uh, Zahi in here. Uh, Sir Zahi Khouri is uh, uh, the president of uh, National Beverage Company primarily Coca-Cola in Palestine. He's one of the most uh, uh, successful businessmen on a global basis, actually, but started from Palestine. Uh, he has uh, a network, a global network, that uh, probably surpasses any one of us, uh, or all of us in this room. Uh, well, maybe with the exception of Bish uh, <laughs> combined, <laughs> which is amazing <laughs> network. And, uh, Yes, uh, uh, I'm always amazed by how many people Bish knows. But Zahi is, uh, uh, has an amazing network. He uh, is a regular uh, speaker uh, working in the uh, World Economic Forum. He is uh, a hero in uh, my eyes and uh, an amazing gentleman. And uh, I will ask first uh, Zahi Huri to talk for a few minutes and uh, uh, speak uh, uh, some of the points that he would like to make since uh, we are all high-tech entrepreneurs in here. Uh, I think uh, the purpose of tonight's evening is to build bridges and see how within this group in here and our friends, we can cooperate with the Palestinian entrepreneurs and uh, we are going to ask them to give us uh, some uh, information about how the environment is there, how uh, many problems they have had, and how they have managed to be so successful despite all the problems. Zahid? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, you. Uh, thank you very, very much. Really, we feel here very much, frankly, at home. And uh, what, uh, what I think every time when I read about this immigration laws and stuff, America should be really Count, it, count its blessing when I see you all here sitting and, and uh, what a great asset you bring to this country. And, uh, and the great thing, what I've heard here, what you also bring back to your country of origin, that's something also we uh, value very highly and, and respect very highly. You know, we, had, uh, we have unquestionably many challenges. I mean, so that to put the the background into perspective is whatever you see on the map as West Bank and Gaza, uh, we, we are really moving around in an area of 20% of the West Bank. And I can say uh, 20 of 22, that's almost 4.5% of historic Palestine. That's really our, our universe of activity, of business activity and movement and and social life. So uh, Gaza is uh, the difference between the warden was inside, now the warden of the prison is outside, but it's still blocked, uh, the hardly any ins and out, uh, entry and exit. So that's kind of the universe where we're working uh, in, and this is why when you plan, when you do your business plan, I would consider it the worst scenario because uh, then it gives you, should the peace process progress, as, uh, and we do, we have a real uh, state, a contiguous uh, state, then I, you can see what the potential is. 
But what I want here uh, to uh, challenge everybody is, uh, in a sense, how do we deal with the present situation? I know what our uh, dream is, and we will get there, is to have a state, as I described, contiguous from the Jordan River to, to the original, uh, to the 48 borders, with Jerusalem as a capital. But the reality is, it's an occupied territory. It has in the West Bank around 2.8 million people. In Gaza, you have around 1.2. And we have to function, and we have to live, and we have uh, to, to have a, a quality of life, let the children grow and be educated, etc. So where is the challenge? Actually, we had, uh, interestingly, two studies being made on a macro basis. One was made by, and both were by McKinsey, and we were told that there was a Chinese war between the two group of consultants. Uh, one was uh, uh, helping the quartet, which as you know is headed by uh, Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Tony Blair, and uh, working with uh, John Kerry on the economic initiative. And, the, and they, were, they did a study for three years where the expenditure would be around 4.4 billion plus, mainly from the private sector. The other study, which is in my opinion by far more real estate, is what can we do with the status quo? And this is I mean, I want to be pragmatic here, I'm not talking politics, but talking about how do we grow within the given conditions, because who knows what will happen with the politics. And this is where I think your creative thinking, your uh, entrepreneurship, uh, what can we do? Because today, we don't have to get out of your residence to be a big entrepreneur. You can do it behind your desk, provided you know what the market needs, etc., etc. But what can we do today? How can we grow? How can we grow from a human point of view also, uh, given the present conditions? And uh, there are many opportunities. Uh, there are many reforms which we need to do. Uh, and. Uh, there are certain things, certain projects which we can do and we will continue to do, but keeping in mind the present obstacles. And I'm sure there's a lot which can be done. So this is where, uh, uh, there are later on some questions on that. We can talk about it, we can send you some material, we can send you some ideas, but I think we have a very unique situation. Today, we, before we came here was uh, an Indian professor, professor G H A Shah at Stanford. He did a, a presentation about the history of conflicts and economic development. But frankly, uh, it had nothing to do with Palestine. I mean, there is no. I can't think historically what can be. Uh, a comparable situation. I mean, under the Geneva Convention, the occupier has to take care of the occupied. In Palestine, first, the occupied has to guarantee the security of the occupier. And the uh, occupier has almost zero cost. So we have to be occupied and and raise whatever we need to raise to fund our treasury to take care of the uh, people. So the, the onus comes on the private sector, and I think, relatively speaking, we're doing a, a good job. So we are in a unique situation. Uh, I'm sure my colleagues will address it from a different angle, but I think I want to really cover it from the context of of those who are present here and who care, and I know you care, uh, and under the present conditions, 
how can we grow and grow quality. Thank you. I've been uh, asked to let you know that the white Corolla, the lights are on, is A and B6833. If it belongs to one of you, you may want to go and turn off the light. So it's also a gray Toyota that yeah. has their lights on. A white and a gray Toyota have their lights on. So two Toyotas, as two people have left. Them. I think that they're, they're conversing with each other. Very <laughs> 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 interesting. So please check them. Okay. Thank you, sir. Our uh, next uh, speaker uh, is uh, Dr. Uh, Sabri Saidem. Uh, he's an old friend of mine, and uh, I met him quite a few years back. And uh, he is uh, one of the amazing forces of uh, high-tech uh, innovation in Palestine. He was a minister of communication for a number of years. Uh, he has been uh, teaching innovation at Berzit University. And he is advisor to President uh, Abu Mazen on uh, high technology communication and innovation issues. Uh, so, uh, Sabi, if I could ask you to first uh, give everybody some statistics about the uh, youth in Palestine, about the level of uh, literacy, about uh, you know all the things, because uh, I think it's impressive if you hear their population, their age, and what uh, uh, they uh, are capable to do. You can just hold it. Just use this one. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. I believe that after uh, such a lovely dinner, everybody's asleep, so I can say and speak uh, freely and openly, and you guys will be just nodding in agreement, uh, I presume. I want to tell you a joke before I give you the statistics, uh, a famous joke that goes around in Palestine vis-a-vis -vis the size of population. It just clicked when he said, please tell them about statistics regarding population and others. There was uh, uh, Abu Ammar, our famous leader, Yasser Arafat, visiting, visiting uh, India one day, speaking to Andira Gandhi. And uh, uh, she said to him, Abu Ammar, you know, you've been, we've been together in this conflict and uh, uh, I want to know some statistics. And he looks at her and he says, uh, well, uh, Your Excellency, what's the size of the population of India? And she says, we're about one billion at the time. And uh, she looks at him and she says, what's your population like? He says, we're about five, six million people. And she says, Abu Ammar, Yasser Arafat, his name is Abu Ammar. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you invite the Palestinians for dinner in India? <laughs> before, uh, <laughs> looks like uh, jokes are coming my way. This is not a comedy show, by the way. Uh, uh, sit down comedy and not a stand up comedy. <laughs> Zahi just reminded me of Arafat uh, going to India, and uh, it's, it's, a free, it's, it's a true story, it happened. He goes to India and then the ambassador greets him, you know, the protocol at the airplane, and he says, we have a crisis here. What's our problem? He says, you know, we have a Palestinian who uh, had turned Indian somehow, and he claims to be God, and he has followers. And uh, he does not abide by the laws and regulations of the, of the government. And we need you to speak to him because he loves you as a great symbolic leader of the Palestinians. So Arafat calls him into the guest house or whatever, the palace. And he says to him, you know, how many, uh, he says, he tells him, you know, we have to abide by the Indian laws, we have to respect this country, and uh, what are we doing exactly? And so the guy, out of respect, he looks at Arafat and he says, you know, I, I acknowledge what you say, but uh, how many followers do you have? He looks at Arafat, how many followers do you have? And Arafat says, well, there's five, six million Palestinians. And he says, how dare you speak to me? <laughs> I have 10 million Indians believing in me. <laughs> Guys, uh, I speak uh, with friends 
with an open heart. And I want to tell you a little story that struck me back in 2005, the year I met uh, Kamran and got to know him over the Gandhi visit. Uh, coming out of Gaza, obviously there's a major checkpoint. Maybe you hear about it in the news called the Eris, Eris checkpoint. The soldier there whom I've come to know because I was commuting in between West Bank and Gaza. There's a ministry office in Gaza, there's a ministry office in the West Bank. And we often, you know, at the end of the day, we're humans. So you interact, you know, you know it's the enemy, but at the end of the day, you know, there is some humanity in between. He looks at me and I know that he loves gadgets and computers. And so I get my eye mate at the time, mobile, and he, I get it out and he looks at it, it was brand new, and he says, where did you get that from? I looked behind me, Gaza was behind me. I said, this, my friend, was made in Gaza. He believed me for an instant and then he looked at me and he said, my friend, if this was made in Gaza, your life would have been different. Trust me, you know, I smiled for an instant, but that, that story lived in me. I believe in change. I believe in productivity. I believe in computers. I come from the semiconductor industry. That's my PhD. I'm not a politician. I then turn politician. But I believe in this power. You produce, you deliver, you're on the map. Your knowledge productive, people will acknowledge you. If you sit back and dwell in your misery, nothing will happen. People may tap you on the shoulder, offer you some money, and it's forgotten at the end of the day. So we were just in Stanford. I said, maybe we have to apply the saying that we have to teach Palestinians how to fish and stop giving them fish. And that's why we're here. We're here to tell you that we have talent. We have a pool of talent. My friend Nafis keeps saying, we have a pool of talent. We invite you to take a dip. <laughs> <laughs> Come and get your swimming costume and take a dip in that pool because we want our kids to come and see you. I've been in the business for the last 15 years, but don't worry, I'm still 25. <laughs> and this visit has really affected me in a different way. I realized that we should have come here a long time ago. There's no problem in confessing to a mistake, but uh, coming a long way is really costly. And preparing such a visit every time is not easy. But from now on, you will see more of us until you're bored. <laughs> now, speaking to our friend Paul, thanks to him and to coordinating, uh, coordinating this visit to uh, SRI this morning, I told him, you know, we have good ideas. We just want to turn ideas into real businesses. He said, you know, you have a community in front of you. Tell them. Say to them that we have ideas and how we can turn the ideas into a practice. I know things cannot be done haphazardly. You cannot just walk in and say, guys, you know, I have the people of Palestine have ideas, let's implement. Obviously, we have our own strategy, but we need to work harder on strategizing, as you said, Paul, on the objectives and then see how we can deliver. What I want to ask of you, because, you know, at the end of the night, you'll be asking what can we do for you? I want to ask you to basically be our extended family. If we send a group of talented Palestinians with ideas, if we send you initial ideas and you believe in them, please invest in them. If you think they're still in infancy, they're not mature enough, help us to bring them to a level of maturity where your colleagues and friends can invest in and then take them forward. Otherwise, we will be lurking in the misery of living under the longest occupation in modern times. And it's not going out easily. And I tell my friends, yes, I hate occupation, but I recognize one fact. Israel has the biggest population in the semiconductor industry as opposed to the size of population. There's no device on earth now that doesn't have uh, 
R and D conducted either in Israel or by Israelis. Yes, it comes from the defense industry, but this is how a lot of technologies came from the moon, from uh, from different places and transcended into technologies that we use. So we acknowledge the impediments, but we don't want to stop there. That's the message. Thank you very much. Number of people and uh, yeah. level of literacy. And Sorry, uh, just uh, a quick recap. Uh, Ninety-five percent is the literacy rate in Palestine. Seventy-six percent of the population is below the age of thirty-four. Uh, computer uh, literacy stands at about seventy percent. Eighty-two percent of the Palestinians in Palestine are connected to the internet. 94% use mobile phones. 60% of that are smartphones. And uh, we are the biggest users of video conference facilities because of the checkpoints and inability to travel. Even our initial laws that were passed at the inception of the Palestinian Authority were passed over internet because our legislators could not travel from Gaza to the West Bank. Mm -hmm. So we established a video conference link and we passed the laws. I said to my friends at the time, when you don't have an internet law and you have a parliament passing laws and you get a traffic ticket, you can go and dispute. And if the policeman would say to you, no, there is a law, you will tell him there's no internet law to back that law. So I have the right to basically complain, meaning that we need to work on uh, uh, a set of laws that uh, need to be developed. But yet that was the courage at the time. Arafat wanted a state regardless. So we had to rely on video conference. And mind you, we have the biggest community of Facebookers or Facebook activists, especially in Gaza. And I think you followed the news and you know how confined people are in Gaza. If you have such a society, that so far has developed in every university, thanks to the work of the, man, of the men to my left, centers of excellences, IT incubators, three VC funds, and also Zahi is a, uh, uh, is a locomotive in, in this business. And our own, as I said, in Stanford, even cable cars, we have them in the Guinness Book of Records, under occupation, looking at, you know, the holistic uh, scene, to be able to deliver such a, uh, a machine under occupation, I'm sure we can do still more and more to come. And we have endless talent. We have the celebration of innovation every year, and you're all invited to join us on the 24th of November. We have people who come up with their ideas. We ask them. It has to be a scientific idea, but has to be turned into an application that's used by the community and can develop into a business. Last year, we adopted five. We gave them up to $20,000, not in grants. We gave them loans, but we took over the responsibility of paying for interest. So you can call them interest-free loans with a long grace period. And with that, we were able to establish the Innovation Fund. And we invite you to consider investing in that fund, and we're happy to send you the details. So you see the importance of, indeed, as I said, teaching us how to fish. Thank you, Amr. One thing I would like to say, uh, how many of you are familiar with Startup Weekend? Okay, quite a few of you. Uh, Startup Weekend uh, tries to synchronize it all over the world. Uh, <laughs> The same weekend, uh, entrepreneurs come together, meet for a few day, days the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and uh, uh, get to know each other, work with each other, uh, have some speakers who come and teach them about you know, developing products, uh, uh, penetrating the markets, uh, uh, scaling up, all the typical things that Thai has been uh, uh, teaching, I guess, its members and uh, for years. This year at the Startup Weekend, uh, I was invited uh, to be in Ramallah. First time Ramallah was participating. And I thought since this is the first Startup Weekend in Ramallah, uh, there might be only four or five companies. How many companies do you think showed up? 
Anybody can guess? 100? No? 85. And I was bombarded with people the moment they heard, here is a stupid venture capitalist who doesn't know much from a Silicon Valley former entrepreneur. They all came with business plan and they all want me to be on their board and <laughs> help them invest in them and what have you. I was totally astounded at the level of talent. And you know, high technology, thanks to internet, thanks to all the uh, routers and servers and uh, all the communication technologies knows no borders and these guys had some interesting ideas so I really encourage you to get to know the modern Palestine the new things and if you get a chance go to uh, Palestine in uh, November uh, we will make sure to send you the information uh, I guess it's called what's the name of it so they can do a search on it Celebration of Innovation. Peace. Uh, yeah. And the website. Partners for New Beginning. Partners for New Beginning. PNPPalestine.ps. PNPPalestine.ps. Partners for New Beginning. Peter Nancy Boy. PNB. Palestine. Palestine, one word, dot. PS. PS. So check on that on November 24th, uh, if you could participate. Uh, you, I promise you it's one of the most interesting places. If you haven't been to Jerusalem, it's one of the most amazing places to visit. And once you go to Jerusalem, uh, Ramallah is only, what, uh, 20 minutes or so. Yeah. Has anybody of you guys ever tried to come to most of them are, are have I American passports, so don't worry about that. Even these days, I think Indian passports are allowed without a visa, I'm not sure. So. You have to check with, uh, I guess, uh, the yeah. embassy, yeah. the Israeli government controls all yeah. the borders. Yeah. But uh, right. again, as I say, you would be amazed with uh, what you see over there and uh, uh, the things that uh, are real are amazing versus what you see in the news. Okay, the next speaker that uh, will last for talk for a few minutes is uh, um, Amar. Amar, uh, when, did, when was the first time that we met? Uh, or 1885, about, uh, <laughs> 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 well, I thought it was with Christoph Columbus days. But, uh, a few years ago. Yeah, Amar Walker is uh, President and CEO of Palto, which is the uh, largest uh, uh, telco in Palestine, the dominant one, and their annual revenue is over 500 million. And they have uh, the largest, uh, they're the largest employer after the government, over 3,000 employees. And uh, I would like Amar to talk about uh, how you managed to work out and grow your company to its uh, current status because it's amazing. Uh, none of us can imagine our lives without. 3G or 4G and uh, none of us can imagine if we had the job to create a communication company that we are not allowed to have uh, the switches and the servers <laughs> brought into our offices and these are amazing challenges that uh, uh, Amar and his team had to uh, go over and since this group are all high tech you can go as much detail as you want and don't be afraid of using high tech terms. Please. Good evening. My friend Sobi started with jokes and then I have to start singing since he started with the jokes. <laughs> Good idea. Well, nobody will stay in the room, so that's why. My <laughs> uh, Well, um, thank you, Carmen. Thank you, everyone, for, for being here and for uh, hosting us uh, here at the Silicon Valley. Uh, 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 Palta, Palestine Telecom uh, is uh, the largest company in Palestine, it's publicly traded and uh, the largest one also in volume of trading on the stock market, almost 30% uh, to 35% of the volume of trade in terms of uh, dollar value on the local stock market. We have more than 3,000 employees, our revenue is more than $500 million and we are a profitable company. However, High yield of 8%, that's what they like to hear. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Zai is trying to get you to, to, to buy our stock. So, the, our dividend yield last year was almost 9%. So, it's a good investment for to buy our stock in the Palestinian stock exchange. It's, 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 it's a 
uh, rewarding stock to, to buy. And uh, 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 the challenges that uh, uh, Kamon talked about and, and uh, what we have been doing over the past 15 years is since the company was established after a signing Oslo agreement uh, between the Palestinian National Authority and uh, the Israeli government, and we were granted, granted the license by, by, by the government. Uh, it mostly has to do with the restrictions that are imposed by Israel. With excuse that telecom is very sensitive to the security of Israel. And that's very hard to explain when you talk about the security of Israel, but the security of Israel might mean like what happened the other year, uh, a, a, a shipment of uh, spaghetti cannot be entered to Gaza because it's a threat to the security of Israel. And based on that logic, we initially, as of six or eight years ago, were not allowed to uh, get our switches into the country. The hard disk of our network are actually placed, is actually placed right now in London, UK the switch of the network. So, so anyone who would like to, to, if my neighbor wants to talk to me or call me over my cell phone, over his cell phone, uh, the, 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 the call actually goes to London, comes back to Palestine. And recently, over the past two or three years, we moved some of the switches to Jordan, our neighboring country, after we were allowed to do that, just to cut down on the overhead and expenses that we are incurring, and the technical difficulties, of course, because of placing the switches in a different continent from the continent that we live at. Uh, 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 other kind of challenges is that the coverage, you know, that the West Bank is divided into A, B, and C. And uh, uh, area A, B, and C, C is 60% of the West Bank uh, area. And it's fully controlled by the Israelis. And the Israeli settlements are placed on area C. And if there is a settlement somewhere, we can place an antenna. We can build a radio base station to provide the coverage. The customer might be disconnected because an antenna cannot be placed in an area where it's considered security to the, uh, a threat to the Israeli security because we cannot place an antenna next to the settlement. The waste part is what Cameron has mentioned, the 3G and 4G. We are one of the few, very few countries in the area that are left with no access to mobile broadband. We don't have a 3G, we don't have 4G. Although both of the Palestinian operators have license for 3G of the Palestinian authorities, and we paid for that license three years ago. But still, the Israeli is not releasing the required spectrum uh, uh, to operate uh, 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 for this technology. And we still uh, uh, cannot provide this service. So if my customer uh, has an iPhone, uh, he or she can only use it to make that phone call. They cannot use it for access to the internet or use mobile applications unless they go home or go to their offices and access the internet. Otherwise, you know, they cannot do it while they are in the car or somewhere else where they are actually in mobility. And that imposes a lot of challenges on us. But again, we are doing what the best we can to pressure the Israeli government through different channels. One of them, and the most important one of them, is the latest effort that are done by Secretary Kerry to uh, 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 provide some economic plan that includes 3G as one of the main items on the uh, in the plan to enable the Palestinian economy to grow. And we are hoping that something will come out, out of this and hopefully uh, we'll have with Rishi if there is any political agreement somewhere in the horizon over the next few months. But we hope, uh, although my friends, some of them are not uh, uh, optimistic, but uh, uh, I'm optimistic that we'll, we'll, we'll get some economic gains, but I'm not that optimistic to get some political achievements out of this. But Let's hope it works. Uh, as a Palestinian company, and the biggest one, we're very active in the social development programs, and uh, we partner with all our friends on this panel to provide uh, uh, some, some kind of capacity building in our society and provide support to health, education, 
uh, technology entrepreneurship and we are very thankful for the, this visit because uh, we think by linking the Silicon Valley to the young people of Palestine we can do much and it's our role as uh, uh, high executives in, in, in the company and a politician so, uh, 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 we can do much to our young generation uh, uh, by, by, by providing them the ability and the access to this part of the world. Uh, we ourselves learned so much over the past few days and we hope that we can do something to enable our young people who are entrepreneurs and um, I tell you, they're very smart. We have very high caliber of human capital and I myself can testify to this because we buy uh, systems from all over the world. They are tested, they are they, they implemented everywhere and we always find a little kid sitting somewhere 14 or 15 years old finding a bug in a well-tested system everywhere. But that little kid sitting somewhere in Gaza or a small village in Ramallah, and they can find a bug in that system, and they cause us to lose money because of this. But it's a good thing that we have that much talent and we can use it someday in a positive way. Uh, so we're hoping that uh, out of this uh, visit, hopefully, and uh, thanks to Cameron and uh, Zola for, for, for uh, arranging this, uh, uh, to establish that link with Palestine and uh, contribute to uh, changing the future of the Palestinian people. Thank you very much. Our uh, next speaker is uh, Nafez Hosseini. Uh, I've had the pleasure of uh, uh, getting to know Nafez in the course of the last uh, two, three years. Uh, I first uh, got to know about the Hosseini family uh, watching an amazing film uh, that was actually, if I remember correctly, Zore, uh, refresh my mind, the Arnold's Children was uh, Jeff Scholes, uh, one of Jeff Scholes movies, right? Yeah. Uh, Anna's children. Anna's children. Anna's children. Anna's children. Miral. Miral children, sorry. Yeah. Miral. 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 Yeah. Miral, okay, yeah, yeah. And uh, I uh, saw in Miral, sorry, I confused that. Uh, <laughs> I saw Miral, uh, a beautiful movie, and uh, the key uh, person, the lady Miral, was, uh, I guess, uh, an office uh, aunt. And uh, such a touching movie, and uh, I highly recommend that you go and uh, see it on Netflix. Uh, M I R A L, right? Yes. M -I -R -A -L. Uh, uh, it's a uh, it's an amazing family, a very successful family, and uh, Nafez is vice president of C C C, uh, which is a multi-billion-dollar construction uh, uh, company. Uh, their headquarters is in Greece, but it originates from uh, mm. Palestine, and uh, he will tell you more about uh, their amazing activities. And uh, Nafez uh, is in charge of uh, leading their work on innovation, on uh, their social responsibility, and on uh, bringing uh, uh, wonderful changes uh, in high technology to uh, Palestine. And uh, he is a uh, uh, chairman of uh, uh, the NGO that uh, Zore, my wife, is uh, on the board of, called the Partners for Sustainable Development. And uh, just a wonderful fellow. We are all ears. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, excuse, excuse me, I have uh, sighed a couple of times and yawned a couple of times. It's just jet lag. That's the first reason. And the second reason is I've been going around in a tour with these three gentlemen who've been repeating the same message over and over again. It's a very essential message, but they're becoming boring. <laughs> it's never boring. <laughs> anyway. It was the first time. I know, I know. So, so I'm going to connect a lot of little stories, some personal and some professional. Uh, together to uh, 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 come back to innovation really as the main topic. In uh, 1890, a grandfather of mine uh, had a, uh, a water mill that uh, was used 
for uh, for grounding uh, wheat, basically, and it was uh, six kilometers uh, to the east of uh, Jerusalem. Uh, it's in a place called uh, the Wadi Kelt. So uh, this guy, in his days, was a very smart guy and very entrepreneurial, and he wanted to do more. He's got a lot of water. What shall I do with it? And so he he did something very smart. Just before he told people about his plans, he went down to a horrible area, scorching weather, called Jericho. <laughs> I'm sure many of you have heard of Jericho. It's 300 meters below sea level. And he bought the lands there, and it's about uh, 50,000 dirhams. Uh, 12,000 acres. 12,000 acres for peanuts. And now okay. they are all rich because of that. <laughs> <laughs> for, pe for peanuts. And what he did is uh, he, he uh, built an open canal all the way from that spring where we have our uh, water mill. 28 kilometers down to Jericho, and we started planting Jericho, and we became banana. The we became the banana uh, emperors of Republic. Jericho, and we became also because of banana this. Republic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they built for us. <laughs> Republic. <laughs> and this, this built for us really a, a good economic base for us and for the people who worked with us because uh, there was a, a couple of years of construction for the 28 kilometers that uh, uh, involved giving jobs to a lot of construction workers. And then after that, there was a lot of work for farmers for the, for the banana plantation. So in the true entrepreneurial spirit of creating jobs and creating wealth for yourself and for others. This was done back in 1880. And uh, this also, I have to tell you, that when you were uh, bored with the money, this gives you also some political leverage. So uh, because of this uh, uh, exceptional economic wealth, we became the Maharajas of Jerusalem, <laughs> basically. <laughs> And uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that uh, we, uh, at that time, uh, there was this person who knew how to package the, uh, the idea and how to develop it into something that made money for himself and for others. At this stage in time, we are now in Palestine having a wonderful pool of talent and uh, I know my, my friends are going to now uh, chuckle over the fact that I keep telling people it's a great pool of talent, come and take a dip in it. Okay, come and take a dip in it, that's the truth. It's a great uh, pool of talent. We need to know now how to package it and how to connect them with the world because uh, we are uh, currently a landlocked country. It is uh, an occupation, a very harsh occupation. We look maybe happy and prosperous, but uh, trust me, the, the people there are living very, very dire conditions. And we want to give these, uh, these people there a chance. And here, uh, I'm putting my business uh, aspects aside. I'm really talking to you as a father of, people, of children who would like to have a good future and a fair future. It's everybody's dream, uh, I'm sure, in this uh, room to have for themselves and for their children and for their families uh, a good and stable uh, life, peaceful and neighborly. So this is what we're here for. We're here for to connect with uh, you guys. and uh, You are innovators in your own field. And the idea is to teach us, and we will uh, humbly learn uh, about uh, how to best package these talents 
and how to allow these talents to uh, uh, to grow. And we're talking about uh, how to deal how to deal with venture capitals, how to uh, do startups. Uh, the whole the whole uh, range of uh, uh, activities that can lead to these people being able to get uh, in in the in the pipeline. Now I'll tell you where we are, what we have done, and particularly in my case, currently I am a Palestinian of the diaspora because I work out of Greece. I work for a construction company that uh, has a sales uh, revenue uh, annually of about five and a half billion dollars. We employ 150,000 persons. Uh, amongst them, uh, we have 20,000 professionals, and the rest are labor. We work mostly in the Arab uh, Gulf on uh, civil and mechanical projects. So, uh, in, in the context of uh, the business, we said, how can we help as Palestinians of the diaspora to give jobs to our people back home? And uh, the talent pool that we are talking about is quite good, but it's raw. It's very raw. So what we did is we shared our knowledge in the head office with uh, a university there called Birzeit University. And we created a center of excellence seven years ago. A center of excellence that started slowly building into the curriculum under our direction as an industry and then as an academia. Uh, a link, a good link that enhanced the curriculas that are in the university <coughs> to uh, start generating a, a generation of uh, engineers that is more technology oriented in construction. And we introduced, um, that's way back there five years ago, the BIM technology, which is the Building Information Management Technology. And it's really now leading edge in the world. Uh, we have uh, a relationship here with Stanford and SIFI. And believe it or not, the CCC work is the one that attracts attention most of all in SIFI. And what did, you do, what did, you, what did we do with this uh, uh, knowledge? Is we have uh, trained those engineers on the BIM technology. And basically, it's, a, it's an advanced layer of CAD. It's an intelligent CAD layer. You start thinking about everything as an object. It's all taken, stolen from the ICT fields because we're really very object-oriented. And, and now we're making the building very object-oriented. And then we put on top of them a quality assurance layer from us because we have uh, quality management systems in place. And we started giving them real work. We now have uh, a modest workforce in Palestine, in Ramallah, 31 engineers that are doing detailing for one of the largest construction projects in the world. They're doing the uh, Abu Dhabi International Airport extension, which is $11 billion. 31 kids most of them under 30. These are the kinds of graduates that are available there. This is one aspect of it. This is the center of excellence track. Now, we know there's so much uh, innovation sitting there waiting to be exploded. This is a term scares the Israelis to get uh, uh, the innovation exploded, but I will use it anyway. We, we want to really get uh, this out and we're here to meet with uh, people like yourselves we've uh, had a, a very exciting visit and uh, i have to uh, say that i'm humbled i'm a person who's traveled the world a lot and i thought i knew a lot turns out i knew i know very little especially in this field so i'm very happy to be here to uh, mix and understand what are the new business rules of the world for our kids to be able to become 
global citizens that can participate in this open economic world. Thank you. Okay, now we are going to open it uh, for questions uh, for the next, uh, I guess, uh, 15 minutes uh, or so, so we can finish around yeah. the yeah. And uh, if there are any questions, start to think about it. Uh, as we are doing that, uh, there are actually some um, very hopeful signs that those of you who might be have kept up with the news. Uh, yeah. uh, Secretary of State uh, John Kerry uh, has been appointed to go and uh, really broker the uh, league night and broker uh, peace. And uh, we are quite hopeful that uh, this thing would open up a lot of the things and would make it even easier for all of us to work, not just with Israeli entrepreneurs who are amazing, and I have backed a few of them, but also go and work with the Palestinian entrepreneurs. And uh, again, as I said, you are out for a treat, uh, treat when you go there and you start to interact with them. You would be amazed by the uh, level of uh, intelligence, the level of knowledge, and uh, the warmth that people have. And uh, uh, one quick other things I will mention since I talked uh, about the Gandhi project, uh, Palestine has got its own Gandhis. If uh, you want to read about or see some of those, uh, go and uh, uh, see two movies. One is called Budros, that uh, uh, won many, many awards, B-U-D-R-U-S, if I'm correctly spelling it. The other one was uh, Oscar nominee last year in the uh, foreign category called Five Broken Cameras. And each one of them documents uh, mm. Palestinian Gandhi who had the guts, the uh, determination to stand up non-violent way against all the atrocities and uh, they both, mm. both of them managed to get the Israeli Supreme Court to get the wall to be rerouted around their village and uh, they won. So it's a really heartwarming movie to watch. Okay, uh, hopefully we have had a chance to think about questions. Nagesh. Yes, Nagesh. Uh, uh, Cameron, you told us a wonderful story about your first visit to Ramallah. Uh, you had to drag this soldier, ex-soldier, to take you there. Now today, if I were in Tel Aviv and I want to spend a day in uh, West Bank, uh, is there an agency or travel agent that can arrange and you go so you don't have to take a soldier with you? Yes, just uh, I gave you my car. I'm just traveling. We can arrange uh, between Zahi, uh, my wife Zora, myself, just send us an email yeah. and uh, we will put you in contact with people uh, from uh, Zahi has amazing network. All of these gentlemen have amazing network and uh, they can arrange somebody in Jerusalem to uh, take you over there, our uh, NGO that uh, we are supporting. Uh, they have taken many guests uh, uh, with them. I remember the first time we wanted to take uh, Jeff Skoll, who is a multi-billionaire, you know, very concerned and he's Jewish American, right. a Jewish Canadian. He said, do I go there and whatever with all these Israeli warnings and whatever. And we said, hey, just come, no security, nothing, don't worry, <laughs> just <laughs> come. And he was astounded. And uh, Ben Kingsley, Richard Gere came with us, uh, Jake Edwards, all of these people. and. Uh, uh, we're just astounded. It's a completely different story. You would uh, just feel so safe, so wonderful. People are so kind and they're so hospitable. They, anybody, you just go and ask. You look like a foreigner. Many people will be so nice to you and help you show you around. Uh, the nephew of Gandhi came twice. Yes, actually, the, uh, mm. what's his name? Uh, uh, the, the son of... Uh, the grandson of Gandhi, I believe, and he's uh, Rajiv. Rajiv, Rajiv. Rajiv Gandhi, I think. No, is, uh, no, no, Yogesh. No. No. Indira Gandhi. Oh, the, the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah, yeah grandson yeah, of Mahatma Gandhi yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, came yeah, yeah. out. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he yeah. went to Palestine a couple of yeah. times, I remember. But today, by the way, the Gandhi is anniversary, so October 2nd. Oh. That was, that's what oh. the day <laughs> So pretty that you are here in the story, okay? So amazing, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
<laughs> so yes, Nagesh, if you want to go, uh, let us know. I gave you there my you card, and uh, Zahi will give you his uh, card also. He will find you the soldier. Don't <laughs> 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 The soldier actually now is a venture capitalist, and uh, what was amazing was loyal Palestinian soldier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was amazing about Eliezer was before. he came back and he told everybody that hey, the treatment he received was so amazing yeah. that a couple months later, when I went back, we had ten Israeli cars full of Israeli VCs, entrepreneurs, all like a caravan, all came with us because. They were just saying, wow, why is it that our government says we should not go there? Why is it that we should be afraid or whatever? I mean, it was amazing. Don't come with a gun. <laughs> you are very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a gun anyway. It's really yeah, nice. Question. 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 Yeah. Now, you are all successful entrepreneurs. So how are you inspiring Palestinian youth and keeping them away from distractions into entrepreneurship? Uh, as I said earlier, we have an initiative called Partners for New Beginning, under which we have an annual event called the Celebration of Innovation. We run an ad in the local uh, press, and we invite entrepreneurs to uh, submit applications. We take the applicants, we sift through the applica applications, and we choose in the initial screening a group of uh, those to be presented before uh, a judging panel in the celebration of innovation. But what we do is that we put them through a crash course with Indiana University, Kelly School of Business. We teach them public speaking, management skills, business planning, and basically equip them with the right skills for them to be able to present their cases. Because we often hit you know, young kids with a lot of interesting ideas, but don't have the guts even to stand before an audience. So we do that, and at the celebration of innovation, they present their ideas, and as I said, we give the winners $20,000. But we thought, you know, we cannot, because we choose five out of 200, 300, and really, sometimes it gives you a feeling of bitterness that you want to choose more. So that's why uh, Zahi and a few of our friends decided to establish the Innovation Fund. And that's, um, a fund that's ongoing now, but uh, still in infancy. We need your advice and support as to how we can go further. What Ammar uh, does is also interesting. He had invested in, through the CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility, he would pay for several projects, launching, um, ranging from uh, basically equipping schools to maybe old people's homes, until he had come up with the idea of what I call myself as nano funding. He goes and looks at uh, women and men who are interested in starting really tiny businesses, like maybe uh, open a vegetable shop, things like this, and he invests in them, but the condition is that they have an entrepreneurial uh, spirit. The idea, to be honest with you, is to go beyond that. Has, this has to be embedded in our educational system. And I'm happy, I was happy last night <laughs> to realize that at last our message has gotten through to the Minister of Education and he had passed uh, uh, a decision within government to reform the system. So the government gave him six months now and formed the committee uh, representatives from uh, different walks of lives to help him reform the system and the system has to include entrepreneur entrepreneurial uh, teaching and has to include also career uh, advice somehow and then that will spin off to university, and already universities are doing uh, that. We have three VCs operating in Palestine now, as we speak. And uh, that issue of entrepreneurship is gaining momentum. Maybe Nafiz wants to say more. No? Well, there's also the fact that we need to work on the long-term track as well. And the long-term track is through uh, better education. Um, I'm very proud to be associated with uh, Zahra and Kamran in this uh, project of Net Kitabi, which is the laptops that uh, Kamran referred to. And it's not just the laptop, it's what goes on top of the laptop. What goes on, the on top of the laptop is digital content that parallels the curriculum so that uh, it enhances 
critical thinking and problem solving. If we want to be part of the uh, global market, we have to teach our kids to innovate. And it doesn't come with just simple factual absorption. It needs critical thinking and problem solving. And these are the kinds of things that are being loaded on the uh, uh, computers. The computers are netbooks from Intel, they're the classmates, and uh, they're being sold for uh, about $250. But the value of the software that's on, on top of them is probably uh, maybe goes into the thousands. And this is being given free of charge. And uh, th these are the kinds of things that uh, uh, will make a difference. It's not enough that we just address the immediate pain. I mean, my example of the center of excellence that we did is addressing some immediate pain. But with time, we have to take the long-term aspect of it. And uh, uh, in combination, the two, the current pain relief and the long-term relief will help build a middle class, a better middle class in Palestine, which is very important, middle class is, is, the, is the class that I, I believe that uh, 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 stabilizes the society, uh, emanates democracy, and doesn't allow, it's, it's like the guardian to freedom, real freedom in a country. And uh, it's always a, a vanguard against uh, corruption and things like that. So we have to think about the long term as well. Well, let me add also, uh, sports play a big role for the young people. I mean, we, uh, we created the first soccer team for girls, and it's done very well. Uh, and uh, the companies, I mean, especially the, the uh, telephone company, I mean, Paltel is a big promoter of uh, soccer. We are big promoters of basketball. Then you have art, music. Is we have the uh, almost I would say five conservatory. I mean one main conservatory, Edward Said National Conservatory, with four or five branches. Uh, so we we need to, we're promoting that as much uh, as we can because we we think uh, uh, this is a good food for the sp for the soul. You know, uh, music and sport are very important. Uh, okay. I guess uh, there is uh, another question over there in front. Yeah, a uh, very simple question. Sorry for my ignorance, but what is the higher education scene in Palestine? And in particular, a very ambitious young kid, when they want to go to college, where do they want to go to college to? Is it somewhere in Israel, or is it in the UK, America? Well, well, you know, they, they, most of them start off in Palestine as a first degree. And then from the, that point onwards, it's like the dreams of any other kid. They would see where the best available uh, field of education in the, in the area of their interest, and they would go to it. So uh, uh, we have good schools, but I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a jumping uh, stone to better things. Uh, uh, this is nothing new to Palestine. Uh, that, that grandfather that made his money in, in the agriculture, planting bananas, uh, managed to send his uh, grandchild, my father, to in 1946. Unfortunately, to come back to in 50, 1950 when Palestine was gone. But uh, th this has been the case all along. and. Uh, we, we don't see any, any borders for education. Can, can they go 20 miles west to Israel? Is it possible at all? No. To go to the Israeli? Yeah. Uh, the, well, yes, but I have to tell you, uh, it's not that easy. We, we are under occupation. And uh, uh, we, even as, as businessmen, when we want to forge a business uh, deal with any Israeli, we question ourselves very much. Is it a, a deal that is built on uh, equitable terms, or is it a deal that is uh, uh, somebody trying to uh, take advantage of uh, my situation 
and help create the captive market that uh, it is right now on? Or do they have genuine uh, uh, genuine intentions and will they treat me as an equal partner? And this doesn't apply only in the business. It applies in the politics. The politics isn't going forward because somehow they don't see us as equals. When they see us as equals, all the political issues will be resolved. Also, Nafis, we have to tell our friends that we have 13 universities, and uh, the biggest of which is Al-Quds Open University, the Arabic name for Jerusalem, Al-Quds Al -Quds Open University. Obviously, you know, when I tell you figures, you may think uh, they're nothing. I was once in the World Economic Forum, and I shared a panel with Queen Rania of Jordan, John Chambers of Cisco, and the Prime Minister of Rajasthan. And I was complaining about, and Shimon Perez was there, and uh, uh, so that uh, Suzanne Mubarak was on the panel, and I was talking about you know the educational system, without realizing that you know their their nations are in the millions. And I looked at the prime minister. I said, "How many you have in one of the local universities?" He said, "167 million. Our biggest university, Al Quds, houses now so far." 40,000. But still, you know, we have our own universities. Uh, our kids decide to either finish in universities or go abroad. Most of them get their initial degree or first degree in local universities. An answer to your second question is no. Not that we don't want to go to Israeli uh, universities. We are not allowed to go to Israeli universities. In fact, anybody below the age of 35 is never granted a permit unless he has a business. So we don't use Israeli airports. Where we go, we cross a specific bridge to go to Jordan, and we travel on land. And that sometimes is not easy. Ammar spoke eloquently today in Stanford about women and children, especially in the burning heat of the summer, being held in buses because of security reasons for hours on end. You know, Nafis told you about Jericho, the temperature in summertime in Jericho rises up to around 50 to 55 degrees. Almost 110. No, it's even more. More than 110. Degrees. We're going to go into renewable energy next. That's my next family's move. <laughs> I have visited Albot University, Al Najjar University in Nablus, and Berzid University in Ramallah, where Dr. Uh, uh, Saidi Sabri is. Uh, a professor and uh, they are actually uh, quite amazing. I gave a lecture in um, uh, Al Najjar University uh, about information technology. 250 young people came, and again, quite a few of them were very interested to pass me business plans because they had aspirations to, as soon as they get their degree, uh, go and start their own business. And actually, one thing that you may want to think about if you are interested. Uh, Dr. Sabri teaches innovation, and through their uh, innovation fund, uh, the group in here can identify some very good entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs. Maybe if you can take some interns, uh, one of the best ways for them would be to come and spend even a few months, two, three months in yeah. Silicon Valley, eat and breathe uh, the air in here and uh, learn. because. When I advise Israeli government how to do high tech or Singapore government or Japanese government, I've always told them, send a few of your people, as many as you can, to live here for a few months and work in American companies and learn how Silicon Valley operates. So if any of you are interested, let us know. We can arrange a few of them to come per year and uh, stay a few months within uh, uh, your companies and learn. They all speak perfect English. They all read a lot on the internet about everything. You would be amazed at the knowledge of some of these young people. And they would die to come to Silicon Valley. I mean, it's their heaven to really uh, learn about entrepreneurship and see how it's done. So. And getting a visa is not an issue? It is, it is uh, not uh, easy, but it, it's, it's available. It works. A process that you work on it, it can happen. Send the invitation, we'll get the visa. Uh, just uh, actually a team of our youth just finished in NASA. The 14, 15 years old, they won a local competition, they came to NASA. Another group took part in, back in May in ISIF, uh, Intel, uh, sorry, Intel Science and Education Fair. 
and another group took part in the Imagine Cup of Microsoft. It's, it's difficult, but it's doable to get them here. I'm told that uh, we need to wrap up. Maybe we just allow one more question. I, I know if you had a question, and then behind we'll, we'll, you there was we'll a question. It's like Ten minutes. It's fine. Okay. It's okay. No, no. Yeah. So please, yeah. Uh, yes. I, I just wanted to add uh, with, with his comment and your comment that how to inspire uh, the grassroots level. And I had an opportunity to work with MSME India, which is a micro, small, medium enterprise. Uh, NGO, NGO organization. It, what that time, whatever I said, maybe I'll share. And uh, what you have to do, and uh, most people want to do, uh, to uh, encourage young people. I just saw in the model here. Most of the time, they, uh, those who want to start a company, they meet in Starbucks. Do you have similar kind of? Framework doesn't have to be startup. Uh, Starbuck. They do have a Starbuck looking one. It's called Stars and Buck, and it looks like the logo <laughs> of that. You, know, one, uh, you would be amazed. But no, there are many coffee shops, very high tech ones. Uh, you can get coffee, you know, all over uh, Ramallah. There is uh, quite a bit of uh, infrastructure. Right. It's, uh, so those, 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 are the place, those are the places I think the, the germination happens. You know, three guys, two guys meet together and do the scribbling end, and then you have a next company. Can I, can I jump in? Sorry. Yes. I actually, this is very relevant. This is very relevant. Uh, I'm a member of Hacker Dojo, and that's a co-working area. There's a lot of these springing up, probably in the last six years, accelerating. These are the types of institutions, if I ever make some money, I'm not in the money-making phase yet, but if I make some money, I want to go to different places in the whole world economy and focus on being able to provide this critical thinking, educational and practice environment. I think that's the way to go for the 21st century is give them the opportunity to come in, give them hardware, give them things to experiment with, teach them the critical methods of thinking, start with logic and build up and don't don't give in to just facts given by authority because the real scientific method is to always be critical with facts and to examine them. And I see them. that you were uh, Hacker. 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 Yeah, what's that? Hacker. We had uh, a Palestinian singer who made it to the Arab Idol and became so inspirational to Palestinian youth. His name is Muhammad Asaf from Gaza. He's now the star of the universe. Uh, people would like to take photos with him when uh, nobody even acknowledged him six months ago. Then that Muhammad Asaf, imagine coming from the music world to Another guy who made it to the news, and you may have heard of him, his name is Khalil Shweta. He was able to to tag uh, the wall of uh, Mark Zuckerberg on yes, Facebook. Yes. And, uh, you know, we have such talent. It's happening. I just as I boarded the plane, a friend of mine called me and said that his brother has found a loophole in the iOS 7. And uh, it is it is happening, and we have a lot of hackers, by the way. <laughs> and you know, we were caught in what we call the electronic uh, war until they promised Israel a total shutdown of services. And they were sending messages, and they were able to partially damage the infrastructure until Israel decided to disconnect its nuclear uh, uh, arsenal away from uh, uh, networks for 24 hours, so not to be tapped into. So you know, with kids of this quality, uh, I'm sure we have the uh, the energy to even excel more and more. And we suffered from it. We killed our network because everybody is fighting, and the network almost collapsed. Yeah. <laughs> he funded them, by the way. <laughs> we have uh, one more we'll question at the back. <laughs> You've been very patient. Well, thank you for coming here. This is uh, indeed uh, very eye-opening, I must say, for me. And, uh, like you rightly said, a lot of us, Palestine, go to see and TV here. Uh, just curious, a uh, lot of the hopeful signs that we talk about in Palestine, are those confined largely to West Bank? Or, you know, is that, how different is Gaza from West Bank? Are they like, really two Palestine here, I guess. Yeah. Good question. That's the way things are about this. <laughs> He's from Gaza, but it's, uh, you know, uh, we, we have three plants, bottling plants in the West Bank, and we're trying to open one in Gaza now. Gaza is uh, 
the intellect among the students in Gaza. What Dr. Sabri was talking about, the competition, etc. The majority of the winners at the end came from Gaza. Uh, the economic situation right now is, is pretty bad. There are many uh, rich individuals who became rich because of the tunnels this, through Egypt. That was the only gateway to, for commercial goods, the tunnels. But uh, Gaza offers enormous potential. I mean, I like to call it the Riviera of the, potentially could be the Riviera of East, East Mediterranean. And Gaza also became, uh, I mean, we're opening the plant in Gaza in the industrial estate. The industrial estate had the potential to employ 30,000 people. And it's now fully furnished, ready, not furnished, but fully built, etc. And there were mainly joint ventures between Israelis and Palestinians. A lot of the textile industry, very or not in the high tech, but the, the objective was basically employment, you know. Uh, and to show what also the misconception uh, about the Israelis and the Palestinians, those partners who were together, Israeli, Palestinian, moved to China. It's, it's interesting, we have many of those who the, the partnerships, they moved to China, both. The Israelis took care of marketing, Palestinians took care of production, and so on. But the potential is Gaza and enormous, to tell you, uh, once it opens up. Yeah, we should acknowledge about the cooperation of some of the people in high-tech business uh, that are uh, Israelis and amazingly good people working with Palestinians. Uh, those of you who might know, Yossi Bardi uh, has worked with the Zahi on a very special organization called Breaking the Impasse. And uh, they have, uh, because they are both uh, amazing souls and want to create peace, and they are tired of politicians not being able to achieve good results. Uh, high tech industries see opportunity to work together, and uh, that's a uh, where uh, a lot of opportunities exist. I mean, it's uh, in our hands in high tech community to uh, unite the world uh, through our technologies, through our approaches of cooperation. And uh, we, one of the reasons Thai is so successful is because uh, anybody can join Thai. It doesn't matter what's your country of origin, what's your religion, whether you're Hindu or Muslim or Jewish or whatever. That's the spirit that we have in here that unfortunately is missing in many parts of the world. And uh, we can use it as a way to bring unity in the world and uh, teach the culture of Silicon Valley and cooperation. And I try to find ways of doing so. That's very true, and we have tried to go to Gaza. You know, I love Gaza, I've been there a few times, but uh, since uh, the borders have been closed to foreigners, so yes. you can't, as an American, I cannot get a visa to uh, go or permit to go to Gaza. It's really sad, and it's beautiful, as they say. The seashore is beautiful, people are amazing, artists, intellectuals, I mean, Gaza is, Special food, amazing. If you want to watch uh, Anthony Bourdain's uh, Parts Unknown, uh, yeah. he had a session that he went to Gaza and you will see the beauty of the place and uh, their specialty. And it's just an amazing. Five thing. star hotel. <laughs> Zahi has a five star hotel in Gaza, by the way. Well, if you I wish to go, <laughs> you can go to you. It is, the hotel is true, but I don't Two weeks it. free of charge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess, uh, Paul, did you have something guess, to say? Uh, that's because part of the delegation's uh, goal is to form the joint ventures and uh, partnership relationship. Maybe they may consider putting a base in the valley as a country, you know, a nucleus over here. We should make it very easy for you to kind of communicate what's happening in the valley and keep a good link. Technology, manufacturing, R&D. Just same thing with Mercedes, for example. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely, yeah. Israel has uh, Op West Labs, yeah. which is in here, and uh, you know, Canada, uh, Singapore, all of them, yeah. in Shlag yeah. and Play have a yeah. special yeah. section. Great idea, we should uh, look at uh, having an outpost in here. 
maybe we could use uh, some um, either Thai facilities or one of you guys if you have some spare room or whatever in Silicon Valley that you can. Yeah, so I want to kind of yeah. comment on that, come sure. and make an offer sure. to you folks so we can just do that. that, that yeah. Actually, that's exactly what we want to do is yeah. to tie yeah. With time. <laughs> okay, I guess uh, with that said, uh, thank you so much. Uh, yes, uh, do a tie. By the way, this, you know, I know only those who are, you know, not here, they just simply did, don't know or did not know what they missed. I think you guys are just amazing, awesome. The knowledge that I picked up just just for listening to you guys, I mean, it's, it's amazing. My knowledge of uh, Palestine is like 54 now increased just by sure? this panel. Okay. It's all been recorded we, uh, uh, in the our website. Uh, so a couple things I want to just say again. Thank you, Cameron, for really bringing, you know, I mean, you people are just awesome, amazing. This story had to be told over and over again. Uh, so a couple things we can do here, you know, just going forward, you know, keeping this bridge uh, active. So one is that, you know, looking at, you know, the, the largest telecom, you know, in Palestine, your internet, how literate the, the whole community on the web and the internet is. So perhaps one thing you should consider and encourage the youth to start businesses that are purely cloud-based because they don't need, all they need is a laptop, they need internet connection. I mean, they really have brains and intelligence, they can keep thinking of all the little applications they can create to improve your own communities around the neighborhood, and that will offer a wonderful bridge to the valley, because we can help you with that, because a lot of our members are deep into the cloud technology, internet technology, and we can probably do what we call remote mentoring, you know, send that away, we can have I'm pretty sure all my colleagues who are Thai HR members who are in this room, they will be happy to get on the internet and you know, you know, answer the questions and, and advice. So that's one thing. The second thing is that you know we talk about the Thai initiatives, you know, in, you know, inspire, inform, educate, prepare, and fund. But part of the funding extension we're doing is we try to bring entrepreneurs from everywhere, and we're going to house them here. Okay, right next door we got a very nice facility. They will be actively mentored. There will be a batch of you know you know, you know, I mean, 20, so 25 entrepreneurs. So if you have some bright entrepreneurs that you, that you're going to award them $20,000, whatever, send them over here for five months. Doesn't really cost them much to hear, you know, and they can be actively in, interacting with us. And every day people are going to come. So they will learn what's kind of happening in the Valley, provided the visa and other issues could be sorted out. I'm pretty sure you, you folks know how to do that. But that will be one offer that we can make. So two offers, one, in, in, encourage them to start internet-based, cloud-based companies. Because, and with the telecom facility that you got, I think they can all figure out, it's really youth was computer literate and mobile literate. So mobile area, cloud area, that will be a good one. The second thing is that find those cutting edge entrepreneurs that you have and let them come and experience Silicon so Valley, you know, house right here. And there will be daily active engagement, active mentoring, they will be attending some workshop and seminar like that all the time. Hey, Ginego, that's the 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 Ginego, that's the